Hi folks, hope you're okay. It's good to be with you. Uh, we're looking at Haggai. Feeling a little bit refreshed after a glass of water. I was a bit tired in that other Bible study. <clears throat> Let's come before the Lord. Father, we come before you today. Hey, Jason. Hello, Tommy. How are you doing? Hey, how are you? I am, mate. How are you doing? You okay? I'm doing good. Hang on just a second. I'll be right back. Oh, it's good to be with you, mate. All right. What's going on, man? I just I'm just doing a few Bible studies. I'm just going to do another one called Building the Work of God. If you want to do it with me, um, I would love to. Uh, the thing is, I've got to go do a little shopping with my wife here in a few minutes. So I don't know when she's getting home, but as long as she's not home and isn't holding <laughs> me out the door, then that I'm available. All right. It's good to see you. I've, yeah, good to see you. How you been? A lot better, mate. I'm sorry for ranting the other day. I I, I let it go. Um, I, I shouldn't have been the way I was. I just that I, I just got wound up. They just wind me up right near Christmas, so but I'm staying away. I'm just going to keep preaching the way. <laughs> you know that's what they do though. They they like like I was telling you, and and I, mean, I experience this too. Um, but. They're they're not on solid ground with most of the things that they that they argue, yeah. and so they have to drag you sort of out of your element in order to. They, they like to play the gotcha game, yeah. and you know if they can get you out of your element, then they can get you uh, flustered and get you saying things that, you know, you might not normally say and. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then and they use they use lies and they use strong arm tactics and intimidation tactics to try to uh, intimidate you. You know. Yeah, yeah. And um, so it's yeah. I mean, I totally get it. So yeah, you're not alone. You're not. You're not alone. <laughs> so, thanks. Thanks, man. And, I, and I, I know all that stuff. I, I mean, I can't even imagine though some of that stuff you're going through. So I'm, I've been praying for you though that you can, you thanks. know, with his help you can get through it. Thanks, so. I'm, I'm just going to ignore them and just concentrate on the Bible and just, just teach the Bible. Yeah. Um, um, so we're going to look at Haggai. Uh, if you have to go, just go. Uh, so don't worry. Okay. Well, I actually don't have my Bible in here. I don't think. I think I'll probably go get that. So I'll be. Go ahead and start. I'll be back in a second. Okay. Okay. We pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Uh, we thank you for your love. And uh, we give you the prayers, we give you the glory, and we give you the honor today. And we acknowledge that you're our God. And so, Father, I just pray for me and Tommy and anybody else, and just pray you'd be with us. And uh, just pray you'd watch over Tommy and family. Uh, just bless us now, Lord, as we give you glory. Amen. Okay, so um, we're looking at the book of Hag Haggai, um, and uh, basically, uh, if uh, have you could you could you read the uh, first ten verses, Tommy? What uh, Haggai? What uh, of the of the chapter? Haggai chapter one. Okay, in the second year of King Darius, on the first day of the sixth month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai to oh boy, uh, Zerubbabel, son of you're gonna <laughs> son of uh, I don't know how do you say that? You you just I don't know just say it. okay okay son of the governor of Judah and to Joshua son of uh, Jehozadak, the high priest. This is what the Lord Almighty says. These people say, the time has not yet come for the Lord's house to be built. Then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Is it a time for you yourselves to be living in your paneled houses while this house remains in ruin? 
Now this is what the Lord Almighty says, Give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much, but have harvested little. You eat, but never have enough. You drink, but never have your fill. You put on clothes, but are not warm, but you are not warm. Uh, you earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. This is what the Lord Almighty says, Give careful thought to your ways. Go up into the mountains and bring down timber and build a house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored. Uh, you expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away. Why, declares the Almighty uh, Lord, because of my house, which remains uh, a ruin, uh, while each of you is busy with his own house. Therefore, because of you, the heavens have withheld their dew, and the the earth its crops. I called for a drought on the fields and the mountains, on the grain, the new wine, the oil, and whatever the ground produces on men, cattle, and on the labor of your hands. Amen. You got so, you got a real gift for Bible reading, uh, on me. Um, well, I was kind of. I think I was struggling because I was kind of echoing or something. I was hearing something in the background. Well, you, but you I hope I start up through it. And I'll just read a few verses there. Verse 12, then Zerubbabel, the son of Kiltiel, and Joshua, the son of uh, Josek, the high priest, with all the remnant of the Lord, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God in the words of Haggai the prophet. And the Lord their God had sent him, and the people did fear before the Lord. Then spoke Haggai, the Lord's messenger, in the Lord's message unto the people, saying, I am with you, says the Lord. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Jelatiel, the governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jezadek, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God, in the fourth and twentieth day of the sixth month, in the second year of Darius the king. Uh, just in my notes here, they, they come in, they've come back from captivity round about. 536 BC. There was about 50,000 Jews uh, that experienced opposition, and now uh, they're just settling down. Uh, they're looking after their own houses. They're not building temple. They're not getting on with the Lord's work. And that's the context. So, have you any thoughts, Tommy, on that chapter before we go into it? Any? Well, I, I mean the. Um, yeah, I was just kind of going through, like, verse 5, especially what he's saying, what's saying there is, it says, you eat, but you never have enough, you drink, but you never have your fill, you put your put on your clothes, but they're not warm, you earn wages, only to put them in a purse with holes in it. Mm. So... Um, Yeah, it's interesting. Um, well, I, I, I put um, the work of the Lord, the, the building the work of God means repentance, that we have to have real repentance in the house of God. Um, if not, that I, 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 I honed in on those verses that you've honed in on. If not, there's no reality within the church. There's no reality in the people of God. They're not going to get anywhere. They're just not going to succeed. Uh, yeah, well, it sounds like they're. I think the one verse that says uh, you drink, but you but you never have your fill. So that that to me kind of sums up basically what he, what what's being said there is they're kind of living for themselves. Yeah, yeah. And they have selfish desires and um, exactly that. I mean, they're drinking but not have it. There, there, there's no real um, there's real no sub no real substance to to their existence. It's an empty existence, I guess, is the yeah. way to put it. If we, turn, if we turn to Joel chapter 2, verse 12. Job? Uh, Joel, the book of Joel. Oh, okay. Joel chapter 2, verse 12. You want to read it, Tommy? Uh, you're probably there faster than me. Uh, Joel 2, 12. Okay. okay. Therefore also now, says the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, 
and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning and rend your heart and your garments and turn unto the Lord your God for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and of great kindness protect him of the evil who knoweth if he return and repent and leave a blessing behind him even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God God is calling calling us as Christians and, and as a church to deeper repentance. We're not seeing blessing in America that we should be seeing. We're not seeing blessing in in the UK that we should be seeing. The, the a great awakening in America and a great awakening in the UK because the church um, is not truly repenting. There are things within the church and in our own lives that we we need to get right with God. We, we need to go deeper with God. Uh, John Wesley says, I will thank the youngest man among you to tell me of any fault you see in me. In being so, I shall consider him my best friend. You know, he was willing for people to, to challenge him and to search his own hearts. Any thoughts there, Tommy? Yeah, well, I was just going to say it kind of reminded me of what our pastor was telling us. It, it's kind of a related topic, but he was he was talking this past Sunday about how um, so many people in the church, they show up on Sundays, and they may come Sunday morning and Sunday night, but then that's that's pretty much it for the week, and they, they think about God on Sundays, and you know their lives are what they are on Sunday, which is apart from what they are the rest of the week, but it's, it, what, he's, what he's getting at is that every day needs to be a holy day, and every day needs to be spent, you know, um, in the spirit of, of, of being an actual Christian who is active, you know, and not just shows up at church on Sunday, but maybe helps with Sunday school, maybe um, helps around the, uh, the premises with the, uh, the landscaping, or, you know, somehow... Uh, you know, helps with, with whatever talents each person has. Mm. And uh, there, there's more to it than just simply just being a Christian showing up on Sunday that, that and, and, and outreach as well and, and uh, making uh, connections with your friends and family. And, and Sorry. So anyway, it, when you were reading that or saying that, it just reminded me that um, in repentance as well is... <laughs> You know, a lot of people, what he was saying too is just a lot of people just don't really think about God or church or anything until Sunday, um, but that's not the way we were designed. We were designed to have a, a relationship, yeah. an ongoing relationship, and um, <clears throat> so that's just what I was thinking of. Amen. Let's go to Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 to 9. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 to 9. Would you read it, Tommy, please? Yeah, when I get there. <laughs> I'm not near as fast as you. Okay, Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 to 9. Verse 7 to 9. All right. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Uh, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Thanks, bro. Any thoughts there, mate? Um, I think I think like the problem, as you mentioned, you put on it. The problem with in in the time of Haggai is really they they they. Like you mentioned, it's about a relationship. They'd lost that relationship. Mm -hmm. They lost that spiritual vitality, and they was what they were sowing. They were reaping. They were they were living a carnal life, and so they weren't getting anywhere. And um, here is challenging us to uh, live the spirit-filled life, to live that life that God has called us to do. Um, 
and if we do that, God will God will bless us in that. So it's it's costly to be working in a Sunday school when maybe you've been working all week. Uh, you're helping in Sunday school at the weekend mm -hmm. or doing youth work. It's costly to give you time uh, to to maybe go and do outreach when when you're busy with other things. But you know, God's no man's debtor. He sees what you're doing, and uh, God will, you know, God will bless what you're doing, and and it's it's not in vain. God, God's using what you're doing uh, for eternity. Um, yeah, it's just it's just an encouragement. He says, "The one who sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life." Let us not become weary in doing good. So, yeah, he's just. In, I think it's just a, an encouragement for, for. You know, um, it's so easy to live for yourself and to do things that will, you know, make life easier or better for you. Um, but it's just, yeah, it sounds like an encouragement to me. Okay, so that's uh, building the work of God means repentance. Uh, secondly, building the work of of God requires uh, basic ingredients. Um, so if we go back to Haggai chapter one. And uh, can we see? Let's uh, get Haggai. Lost it. There. Haggai chapter one, verse twelve and fifteen. Is there any? Can is there anything basic? Uh, if we're doing the work of God, wherever God has called us, or what, whatever God has called us, there's some basic, couple of basic principles that we can learn. Uh, Haggai chapter one, verse twelve and fifteen. But it says, Then Zerubbabel, the son of Jeltiel, and Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God, and the words of Haggai the prophet, as the Lord their God had sent him. And the people did fear before the Lord. Then spoke Haggai, the Lord's messenger, and the Lord's message to the people, saying, I am with you, the Lord. Um, and one of the lessons, you can pull out other lessons as well, it's not uh, exhaustive. One of the lessons that I got is that verse 13, I am with you, says the Lord. And uh, God is with you. And God is with you in ministry, is with you in your family, is with you. And if he's with you, what have you to fear? You can go forward in the work of God. So if we turn to 1 Corinthians 15:58. Uh, 1, okay. 1 Corinthians 1558 do you want to say anything there Tommy no I, I'm okay okay if we go to 1 Corinthians 1558 okay all right uh, uh, okay therefore my dear brother stand firm let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So, so God has given us a promise there that as we go forward, as we serve him, it's, it's not pointless, it's not worthless. It's not in vain. God, God is with us, and he's going to bless the work that we do for him. Uh, we turn to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, I think. Uh, verse 11. I might be wrong. Matthew 16, verse 11, we'll just see. Okay. Verse 11. Okay, so, how is it you don't understand that I was not talking to you about bread? Uh, but be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. It's the wrong one. It's the wrong one. The Sorry. Um, sorry, it's just my handwriting. I can't see. Let's see, 18. Let's try 18. Oh, verse 18? Yeah. I'll tell you what, forget that. I've, I've written it down, but I can't read the verse. The, the <laughs> verse. Matthew 28. Matthew 28. I can read that one. Matthew 28. Okay. Verse 18 to 20. Um, 
going to get there. Okay, 18 to 20. You want to read it? Um, yeah, I can read it. Um, then Jesus came to them and said, "All authority in heaven and on God. I, I'm sorry. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age." Wow, you got a great voice, Tommy. You know. Oh, I've always hated it. <laughs> great voice for reading scripture. So you know, be encouraged if you're a pastor today. You know, God has given you a commission, and He's with you. If you're a leadership team, God has given you a commission. He's with you. If you're in ministry, He's with you. Whatever you're doing for the Lord, He promises to go with you, and uh, He'll meet your needs as you go forward. Any thoughts, Tommy? You know, so in Haggai, God promises, you know, if you start building, I'm with you. So get on and build. Yeah. Um, I mean, that seems to be what the, in a, in a nutshell, what what Christianity, what being what being a follower in Christ is all about. It says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded. I, I mean that's that's what it is, all right there. Amen. Um, so, my gosh, you could pretty much read that one verse, and you know, it's pretty much a condensed version of of, of the New Testament. Amen. You know. Amen. So, the, some of the basic things. One of them, as as we work for God, God is with us. Secondly, the Word of God does its work. Haggai chapter 1 verse 12. You want to read it? Just uh, go ahead. <laughs> I had a hard enough time finding it the first time. Well, verse 12, notice it's the word, the word of God that does the work. Then Zerubbabel the son of Jatil and Joshua the son of Jezadik, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed what? Obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the words of Haggai the prophet as the Lord their God has sent him. And the people did fear before the Lord. So what sparked off? What moved this people? What really got them going? You see, as a pastor, as a pastor, sorry. As a pastor you can uh, whip your church and say, you must do this, you must do that. But that's not going to get anybody to do anything. The only way that people are going to serve the Lord is when the Word of God speaks to the people. When the Word of God challenges the people. It's the Word of God that does the work. The Word of God. Um, Amen. So, we, we have to depend, if we're going to mobilize the church, if we're going to mobilize people, the best thing a, a church can do, a pastor or a leadership team, is get out the Bible and start teaching it by the Holy Spirit and the Word of God will do its work. It, that will motivate people as it gets into the system. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 13, verse 1 to 23. Matthew chapter 13, verse 1 to 23. All right. Could you read it, Tommy? All right. Okay, so let's see. Matthew 13, 1 through 23. Okay. The same day that Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake, such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it. Uh, so, some fell on the rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had, not, they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up, and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop. A hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. He who has ears, let him hear. The, the disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to people in parables? He replied, <laughs> The knowledge of the secrets of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever will be given 
more, and he will he will have abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. This is why I speak and speak to speak to them in parables. Uh, though seeing they do not see, though hearing they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will you will be ever hearing but never understanding. You will be ever seeing but never perceiving. For this for this people's heart has come calloused. They hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and in turn, and I would I would heal them. Uh, but blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. For I tell you the truth, many prophets and righteous men long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Listen, listen to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the deed sown along the path. Um, how, how far are we going? 20? Um, to, yeah, to the end of the... 20? Yeah, okay. 20, sorry. 23 is... Okay. Okay, um, the one who received the seed that fell on the rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word. But the, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it untruthful. But the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what it was sown. So there's the parable of the sower, and you know some some fall on bad soil, some are snatched away, the seed, uh, and then some seed fall on good soil, and it's a parable of the word of God. The word of God is sown. It falls. Some don't hear it. Some it's shallow. But some people hear the word of God, and ministry and and the work of God has to be uh, focused on the word of God. It's the word of God sown in people's lives that does the work. It's powerful, and it changes people's lives. It, it changes. It converts people, and then it helps them to grow. It, it's it's the spiritual food that helps people to grow to be disciples. So what we have to do, in, in if we're going to get the work of God to go forward, we have to sow the word of God. We have to get that word into the center of the church and get the word into the center of the community. Um, uh, and, and that's key. That's really key to get that word right at the heart of what we're doing. I'm not back at that other passage, but, yeah, this is very similar to what, what was said in Haggai, you know, about people hearing, but... Or sorry, listen. Uh, yeah, what, I forgot how they how it was put, but uh, how they were not filled, basically. Um, but I'd have to go back and read it now. I've, I've kind of lost the uh, lost my train of thought. But it seems to me like it was it was kind of um, yeah, kind of very similar to that anyway. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. That's that's something. That was a good point, mate. So some of the basics, number one, uh, God's with us, number two, the word of God is central, and number three, we need the Holy Spirit to do the work. So if we go to Haggai chapter 1 verse 14, we have to see the Holy Spirit at work. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, the governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jezedek. I can't pronounce <laughs> Josedek and the high and the spirit of all the remnant of the Lord and they came and did the work in the house of the Lord of hosts their God. So they were stirred by God to do that work. And if we turn to Acts chapter one, verse six and nine. I could find that a little easier. <laughs> I bet you get it. Yeah, I happen to get this one quickly, but okay, one six or nine. Yeah. Okay, so when they met together, 
They asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to, to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him uh, from their sight. Thanks, mate. Thank you. So there, the Lord's telling them as as um, uh, as Pentecost is to come, it's going to be a time when the Holy Spirit will come upon the church to equip the church to be witnesses. Um, and you know, uh, I, I met a guy today, uh, and he, he runs a day center, an evangelistic day center, like. They share the gospel. They they minister pastorally. And they give cups of tea. And he said that there was a lady who, who who was dying, who was like a servant of the Lord. And he took he told her that she told him to relax and let God do the work. So he was trying to he was trying to run around and get the day center going and and trying to uh, get people converted. But then he, he began to relax and just let the let the Holy Spirit work. And he began to see, as he was doing the work, he began to see God bring people in and people got converted because he wasn't going in his own strength anymore or trying to do the work in his own strength. He was relaxing in the in the presence of the Holy Spirit and, and, and believing in the Holy Spirit and allowing the Holy Spirit to work in his ministry. Yeah, uh, that kind of that kind of harkens back to what you were say, saying about let, letting the word you know, the word is what actually draws people in and speaks to their hearts and so it kind of mirrors what you were saying a second ago. So if we turn to Acts chapter 2, verse 1 and 4. And Tommy, any time you want to jump in, just jump in, mate. Yeah? yeah, okay. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. Okay. When, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Okay, mate. So, I mean, we could talk about uh, tongues, our tongues for today or not, whatever. But the, the main thing here, uh, whatever position any, anybody's on, the main thing here is that it was the Holy Spirit that came upon the church. And without, without the Holy Spirit in the midst of the church, if, if the people of God don't believe in him, don't have faith that he's at work, that he can convert, that he can change people's lives, that he can change communities, if you don't have faith in the Holy Spirit, then your work is not going to be blessed. You have to have faith in him. When Spurgeon was getting into the pulpit, he always says, he always used to repeat under his mouth, I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit. So, any thoughts, Tommy? Um, you know, I would just like to add to that that you know, I think I think the Lord can work with even just a small sliver of faith, even just a small seed of faith. You know, you don't have to have I don't believe just this instantaneous giant, you know, um, <laughs> faith, you know, be you know, like an event evangelical preacher uh, necessarily but God can God can use uh, the, the smallest sliver that you give him yeah. and so you know that's that's one thing that that I experienced when I well I still do but especially when I was an early Christian or, or, or uh, you know several years ago is that um, I just I, I had a little uh, I think a little seed and it, and it grew and God filled my heart with it and so I think definitely faith can can grow and God can use uh, whatever your whatever you uh, you know your gifts are and whatever faith you have, he can use it uh, for his glory. Amen. That's all. That's brilliant, mate. So and and I, I like to you know when I'm talking to people, I remind them of that that you know people who don't believe and don't have faith. You know, it it is it is like that. I mean, it's just something where you don't have to have you know snap your fingers and magically you have to have this this wonderful faith wash over you. It's it's yeah. something that the Lord can grow and and the Lord can do His His wonders through you, but you just you know you do have to step out in faith to some degree, but um, you know it it can and will grow and it'll be a beautiful thing. 
Amen. Amen. So, what are the basic things in the work of God? Number one, the Word of God. Number two, uh, sorry, that, that God goes with us. Number two, that the Word of God does the work. Number three, we depend on the Holy Spirit. And number four, as you've already mentioned, we use our gifts, we use our talents. So if we go back to Haggai chapter 1, verse 12, notice... Uh, I'll let you read that. <laughs> I, I really should probably have put a bookmark there. but well, well that, that, I know about where it is, but now yeah, I found it. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm going to get good at finding Haggai now. Haggai chapter 1, verse 12. Notice something. Uh, just switch on everybody, who, whoever listens now. Just notice something which is very important. Um... It says in Haggai 1.12, Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shiltiel, and Joshua, the son of Zodek, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God, and the words of Haggai the prophet as the Lord their God had sent him, and the people did fear before the Lord. Did you notice there, number one, Zerubbabel. Number two, Joshua. Number three, the people of God. Number four, Haggai. In other words, this is a team ministry. People are involved as a team in the work of God. And too often, um, you know, I, I, I believe that God has his, his leader. He, he, he raises up our leader. But a leader without a team is nothing. We need people right. to be involved in teamwork. We need teams. The reason being, for two reasons. Number one, everybody's a minister. Everybody, the Greek word for minister, you know, is the idea of a servant. And the classical Greek, when you look at it, it's about serving tables. You know, and so Paul, when he talked about ministry, we looked at that in Ephesians chapter 3 and 4, uh, where he talks about being a minister. He's on about uh, serving tables. He's on about everybody's a minister. Everybody's a servant of the Lord. And we all have different gifts. Some are pastors, some some are evangelists, some are different, whatever. But we all have a ministry. We all we're all involved in ministry. So, you know, let's turn to one Corinthians chapter twelve. And if you want to chip in, yeah, I'll just say, you know, I kind of look at it as like an orchestra. You know, there's there's different parts of the orchestra. You know, you have horns and and strings and drums, and you know, it it might sound disjointed if you didn't have some of that stuff. But they ultimately all work together to make a beautiful sound. And so that's kind of how I see Christians in the church and even this community here on Google and YouTube is is a lot of Christians have different, well, well, we all have different talents and different gifts. And so I bring what I have to the table and you bring what you have to the table and we all bring what we have to the table and it, it's a beautiful thing. It can make a beautiful sound. Amen. That's a good illustration. What was that next one? Uh, uh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians 12, if you want to read it. or Okay. Uh, verse 1? Okay. Uh, through, through which? Through uh, well, it's, a, it's a long chapter. Uh, just however, just keep reading and however you feel left. Well, well, I'll just read to... I'll just... Well, I'll just go to... But just get the the gist of maybe. Yeah, I'll go to I'll go one through twelve, one through eleven. Okay. Okay. Now about spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that when you were, uh, I'm sorry, you know that when you were pagan, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute to to mute idols. Therefore, I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God of, of God says, "Jesus be cursed." And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God uh, works all of them in all men. Uh, now, to, now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another uh, miraculous power, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. 
all these are the work of one and in the same spirit, and he gives them to each one just as he determines. Amen. Amen. And, you know, the church uh, is a body, and as a body, there are different parts to that body in us. As uh, Tommy said, uh, you know, the church is like an orchestra working together. So we all have a gift, whatever the gift, whether you're from the charismatic end or the Calvinist end or whatever, whatever your theology is about the gifts, we all have a gift, whatever that is. You know, the yeah. idea... Sorry, go uh, I, I, I was just, I didn't mean to interrupt, I was just going to say, and the, the cool thing about that is really, is you, it's like I don't have to try to be Jason Burns, or I don't have to try to be someone else. Is, but what I can do is emphasize and really, you know, flex my muscles on whatever I can do, whatever God gave me. I can, I can, you know, through Him and His glory, make those the best that I can make them. Mm. And um, so, you know, just like a flower, you know, a, a flower is beautiful, um, but it's not an oak tree. But a flower can be beautiful in a flower sort of way, and an oak tree can be beautiful in an oak tree sort of way. So uh, yeah, so that's all I was gonna say is that we each, we each have these gifts and we just need to our, our job is to make the most of them. Amen, amen. So the question is, folks, what gift have you got? What gift have you been laying aside that you could be using for the Lord? And and whatever it is, you know, God loves you and it's good part of the body. You you've got a, an important uh, role to play within the church and you're significant in God's eyes and in the church eyes, even if maybe uh, people are not encouraging you to use your gift, God says that you have a gift, God says that you're a servant, and so, you know, get on and thank the Lord as, as, uh, as he guides you uh, in, in your local church. You know, I'll just, I'll just share one of my gifts real quick, which is, which is kind of an odd gift, and, and I've always had this gift, mm. and... Um, and just here of in the past year, I've kind of started flexing that muscle. But I've always had this ability and just this connection with older people, um, you know, like el the elderly, mm -hmm. and you know, whether it be uh, you know neighbors in in my neighborhood growing up as a kid, or grandparents, or or anybody old, I just have always had this connection with them. So, um. So, like, I've just sort of parlayed that into, you know, I, I do go to nursing homes and and talk to talk to old people, just because that's what I'm good at, and um, I'm not so good about talking, you know, to talking to people in their 20s, you know, for example. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but so that's just that's just what I'm good at, and um, so I, I try to take advantage of it and and do do that when I can, and um, so. That's just one example, I guess, for, for people out there to know what we're talking about, sort of. Hey, Amen. That, that was really good, bro. Uh, and that, that's it, really. Uh, we've come to the end, so we talked with... Let's just recap and then uh, just finish with... That was really good, that, Tommy. Um, we looked at the background of Haggai, 536 BC. Uh, it was, I, I, I'm sorry, Jason. Go ahead and, go ahead and finish up. I've got to... Um, I've got to kind of peel away here real quick. Okay. Take so care. I'll, let, I'll let you wrap things up, but I'm being summoned. All right. Well, take care, bro, and God bless you, and thanks. All right. Been, yeah, we'll have, to, we'll have to do this again. Love you, man. It's been a great thrill to be with you, mate. I've, I've really enjoyed being with you, mate. Yeah. Uh, look me up again. Send me, uh, send me a link next time you come on and, and do the Bible uh, study. All right, mate. Take care now. Okay. All right. You take care. So we, we looked at um, the background uh, around about 536 BC. Uh, we looked at how the people of God had settled down uh, and stopped doing the work of God. Excuse me. We looked at building the whole, building the work of God means repentance, a real true repentance of heart. And you can look at Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 11 to 20 uh, for that if you wanted to study a bit more. We looked at building the work of God requires some basic ingredients. Uh, number one, that God will not fail us. He'll be with us in the work. Uh, number two, the word of God will help us. And, and the word of God does the work in, in a sense that he's, the word of God speaks to people, challenges people, equips people, converts people. 
And number three, the Holy Spirit does the work that he convicts people, that he renews people, that he works in people. Next, that everybody's got a gift. Everybody's got a gift, as as uh, Tommy taught about, where the church is like an orchestra. In the book of Haggai, at the beginning, the people of God neglected the work of God. There are many, many, many tens of thousands of people today who know the Lord Jesus, who are neglecting the work of God. Your own houses, your own careers, your own lives have become more central to you than God's glory and honor. There are people out there who've got the gifts to serve the Lord. Gifts of youth work, children's work, gifts to preach, gifts to pastor, gifts to evangelize. There are many people, thousands, tens of thousands of Christians out there with wonderful gifts for the Lord. And for whatever reason, maybe you've been discouraged, maybe you've been hurt, maybe you've just got busy, maybe whatever it is, but you've given up and you've neglected the work of God. And you see the work of God in your area neglected. You see the local churches struggling in your area. Don't you think it's time you get back into the, to the battle? Don't you think it's time you got back into the serving of the Lord? Don't you think it's time you got back into preaching again, pastoring again, evangelizing again, doing the youth work, the children's work? Don't you think it's time that you roll up your sleeve again and started serving the Lord and putting his work and his glory first? Let's turn to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. And then we've come to the end. Matthew 6, 33. says but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you put God first put his glory first put his honor first and if the house of God is being neglected that's showing a lack of respect to God it's time for you to get back into the serving the Lord and making sure that your church your local church is giving God the glory by doing its very best in serving him let's come before the Lord I want to thank Tommy for coming it was a great delight to have you Tommy and so thank you so much for coming I really appreciated that I feel so blessed spiritually to have that time with you in the Word of God and I really hope that we can do more of that in the future uh, because that's what I enjoy uh, please forgive me uh, for reacting I did not react in a Christian way the other day to one particular atheist and I do regret that uh, because we are to live we, we are to adorn the gospel in a gracious way uh, there's no excuse uh, but uh, I am put under a lot of pressure by some of these people um, and it's a lot of pressure um, and sometimes that pressure gets to me um, but uh, I want to continue to teach the Word of God I enjoy it uh, and that's what um, I'm called to do so please support me in that please pray please encourage me uh, if, if I'm on doing the Bible studies and, and things you know let me know if you want to come on and study the Bible with me like like Tommy okay let's let's come before the Lord <clears throat> Father God, we thank you that you've reminded us the basic lessons to serve you as we build the work for you, Lord. 
that we're to have deep repentance. It's a repentance of, of, of from the heart that is deep. And Lord, it is a it is reality that you want amongst your people. And Lord, I confess my lack of reality, my lack of godly, my lack of godliness, Lord. And I confess all these failures and sins. And Father, we thank you that you've promised that you will go with us in the work. You promised. You have promised that your word will do its work. You have promised the Holy Spirit will do his work. And you have inspired each individual to use their gifts. So, Father, we bow before you now. And we pray that this Bible study, all that we shared together, me and Tommy, that, Father, as we served you and as we shared the word together, we pray that this would build your people today. And each day as they hear this study, that it would refresh them and renew them and encourage them. We pray that you pour out your Holy Spirit upon them and bless them, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name and for your glory. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you for listening to the Bible study. That's it. Uh, maybe I'll do another one tomorrow night or in the morning. Uh, so thank you. God bless you and see you soon. Take care.